Another thing I've learned living in the South is the bugs are bigger. Y'all got some Nashville geographic stuff happening here. Like in California, we have bugs, but our bugs are kiln. <laughs> then I get to Nashville. I went to get in my shower one morning. There was a spider in my shower. Now this spider was so big, I thought I was interrupting him. <laughs> I did, I went to open the shower curtain. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know anybody was in here, my bad. <laughs> he was big and he was furry too. Yeah, I didn't know if I should brush it or smush it, I didn't know. <laughs> he was so furry, he had dander. <laughs> I need my Zyrtec pill just for the spider dander. I was like, sir, the head and shoulders is right there, help yourself. <laughs> if I ever have to kill a spider that big, I am morally conflicted. Because at that point, that's a pet. <laughs> Put a collar on that thing, that's Bubba. <laughs> Bubba had plans that day. He was just getting started, he's in the shower. That's messed up. If you ever have to kill a spider that big, you could hear the crunch. And if you hear the crunch, you know that thing had a soul. That's messed up. I used to kill any spider or bug that was around me because I don't like bugs at all. But over the past couple of years, I have this newfound respect for nature and insects. So now, if I ever see a spider in my house, what I like to do is scoop it up in a container, take it outside, throw it in a bush, and then immediately go like this. <laughs> but if I'm left with no choice and I have to kill a spider, I now like to start with an apology. Listen, sir, I know you weren't expecting this today. I'll be honest, neither was I. Truth is, I don't know you. You could be poisonous and you could kill me. So at this point, it's either me or you. And I have chosen you. There was this one night, I was home alone, by myself because that's what Home Alone means. <laughs> and I was watching The Night Stalker. Did you guys see that one? The documentary about the serial killer that was in Southern California like back in the 80s. So I'm home alone watching this show, super creepy, episode's done, I turn the TV off, and all of a sudden, I hear this on my front window. I said, nope. I ran to my room, I put on every piece of clothing that I own. I said, if he's gonna try to assault me, he's gonna have to work real hard. I don't have no weapons in the house. What's my self-defense weapon? Denim, three pair. After a while, nobody came in the house, but I kept hearing the noise. Finally, I go to the window, I move the curtain, I look outside, and it's not a psychopath trying to kill me. It was a mosquito. <laughs> the size of a bald eagle. <laughs> or maybe it was a cicada. I don't know. I never seen a cicada in my life, but everybody kept telling me, oh, it's cicada season. Maybe it was one of those. Maybe it was a mix of both. Maybe it was a muscada, I don't know. Some Nashville Geographic stuff happening. <laughs> this was the kicker for me though. There was one night I was driving home and I'm pulling into my driveway and what do I see? A snake slithering across. That's where I draw the line right there. That's where I was like, all right, you know what Nashville, bless your heart. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. I'm not a big fan of wild snakes. Pet snakes, I'm okay with. Like if there was a snake right here and he came with a cosigner, <laughs> like he came with a guy that was like, oh yeah, that's my pet, he's cool. I like that snake, that's a good snake. Him, I don't know him. <laughs> he probably had that snake since he was a baby. He probably just ate a baby. 
pet snakes, I'm okay with. Like, you know how sometimes you go to a real touristy area and there'll be that one guy with like a hundred pound snake around his neck and he's just walking around. He's like, yeah, you want to take a picture with my snake? I'm like, I'll do it. He's like, all right, 20 bucks. Yeah, I don't need no picture. But the point is, I was down. I was going to do it if it was free. Because free is my love language. <laughs> Learning a lot. Being a California girl, living in the South, I actually had my very first tornado warning experience. <laughs> Like I said, I'm from California. We don't get tornadoes in California. We get earthquakes. Now, earthquakes are scary for people who have never experienced one. But actually, they're not that bad. To be honest, I will take an earthquake over a tornado any day. Like, let me tell you. Give me a 3.5, a solid 4. I will ride that quake like, hey. But a tornado, though? I don't know anything about tornadoes. This is what happened. We were asleep. It was 3 a.m. I get one of those amber alerts on my phone. The alert that goes off real loud. And I was like, okay, first of all, what child is getting kidnapped at 3 a.m. that they need to wake me up to tell me about it? What VIP child is this? that they think at 3 a.m. I'm gonna run outside looking for Honda Civics. A silver one, it's always silver. I check my phone, whose kid is this? And it says, tornado warning, take cover now in a basement. Ooh, my heart started beating so fast. I said, oh my God, do we even have a basement? I don't even know. Because I'm from California. We don't do basements in California. That's dangerous because there could be an earthquake. I wake up my husband. I was like, babe, babe, we got an alert on the phone. It says there's going to be a tornado. We got to go in the basement. Do we have a basement? Now, my husband is an army brat. He grew up everywhere. He spent a lot of time in Kansas. And he was like, oh, we used to get these all the time. Don't even worry about it. Just go back to sleep. to sleep. 